Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 27. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and as the brightness round about, as the appearance of a bow that was in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. When I saw it, I fell upon my face. I heard a voice of one that spake. And he said unto me, This would be God, the Lord Jesus Christ, if it's the one that he sees on the throne. Son of man. Now that expression occurs. 93 verses in Ezekiel. And that is the, the, the famous expression for the Lord Jesus Christ. That you will find 85 verses in the New Testament. The book of Revelation, the Gospels, Acts, and Hebrews. In the Old Testament, it's 108 verses. And it would show the humanity part of Jesus Christ. And yet still, he's the Son of God. Ezekiel, he's the Son of Man. Stand upon thy feet. He's down. Remember, he's bowed down. At the presence of God, you're going to fall. And there'll be people, oh, I'm going to walk right up to Jesus. No, you're not. Absent from the body and present with the Lord, you're going to be down on your knees. And I will speak with thee. And the Spirit, that would be the Holy Spirit, entered into me. So the Holy Spirit did enter into Old Testament saints. He did not stay. Samson, the greatest example. The Spirit was upon Samson, and the Spirit left. The Spirit was upon Samson, and then the Spirit was on Samson. Samson kept getting the Spirit and kept losing the Spirit. And we'll find that with even Ezekiel. There'll be plenty of times that the Spirit came into Ezekiel. Um... He talks about the Spirit with the, with the wheel. The Spirit entered into me when, when he spake unto me. So there is God speaking to, to Ezekiel and the Holy Spirit working. And set me upon my feet that I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, you see that a lot, I send thee to the children of Israel. Now here is the great commission. Now, Ezekiel will also deal with nations. But here is the commission of Ezekiel. I will send thee to the children of Israel. Comma. To a rebellious nation. Oh, boy. That has rebelled against me. And their fathers have transgressed against me, even... Unto this very day. So the good news comes first, Ezekiel 1. The creature, the wheel, the throne of God. The bad news comes, all right, here's what I've called you to do, Ezekiel. The children of Israel, children of Judah, they're not going to listen to you. Now I believe too that, um, The same thing is even with Jeremiah. Now, Jeremiah is sent by God to a people, you know, they're not going to listen. Jesus sends the disciples, soon to be apostles, out. They got ears to hear, but they don't listen. Eyes to see, and they don't see. People think everybody's going to heaven, but broads the way that leads destruction. Few that will go through the straight gate. 
Now, there's some people who think, well, you know, the ministry is a vast call of numbers of people. I mean, look at Joe Olstein. Look at all these mega churches. Yeah, but look what God said to his prophets, Jeremiah, to Ezekiel. Look at the lives of Jesus Christ, the lives of Peter, James, and John, and Paul. And then you look at the life of Joe Olstein and, and uh, these mega churches. Somebody's doing it wrong. Then you get these churches, you know, they count the people. They, they're trying to meet a number of set goal. And primary the Bible by the word of God, by Jesus Christ himself, by Paul. Marvel not the world hates you. All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have I not have I become your enemy? Because I've spoken the truth. I'm in perils of my countrymen. I am perils of, of the Gentiles. I'm in peril of the Christians. If you're going to do the service and work of God, all the prophets, all the men of God, Old and New Testament will tell you, it ain't in the numbers. Moses had the mega church of all the years. And boy, did he have problems. Noah had all the congregation in the world, but only eight went in the boat. Jesus had only two people at the cross that were on his side. The ministry ain't numbers. It's a veil of tears. I will send thee to a children of Israel, a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They're going to rebel against me. They will rebel against you. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. So the fathers taught the children. Even unto this very day, I'm speaking to you, Ezekiel. Now, the children of Israel, uh, are in captivity, some of them, Ezekiel 1 1. Ezekiel 1 2 is the second to last king. The axe has not completely fallen like. Jeremiah. It didn't completely fall to the end of Jeremiah. For they are impotent children. They are shameless. Wanting modest, modesty. They're saucy. There's no shame in what they're doing. And friend, that, descri that describes America today. Your land of Hollywood and the false lies that come out of the, the fake media and, and the, the deceivability of your politicians, both Republican and Democrat and Independent, they are not ashamed. As the false prophets in the Old Testament were not ashamed to false prophesy, you got people in the pulpits of any pulpit today, they're not ashamed. There are Christians, professing Christians, may even saving, save Christians. They're not, they're not ashamed they don't read their Bible. They're not ashamed they don't try to go to church and serve the Lord. There are shameless people in your Baptist churches. They may act holy. As we will see in Ezekiel. But their lives outside the church assembly is anything but holy. I 
I do send thee unto them. Now, you know, that's some bad words. You know, there's no other greater bad words that I would see to be recorded in the Bible would be the day that Moses called Joshua and said, Joshua, yes, Moses, in a few days I'm going to die. Oh, no, Moses, no. Yeah, I'm going to die. You remember back there when I smoked that rock and I, I can't go into the promised land. Moses. So I'm going to die and there's going to be somebody who needs to lead these people. Joshua, yeah, well, who? You. <laughs> what? Joshua saw all that happened to Moses. Joshua, from what we can learn, was with Moses from the very time they came out of Egypt. Ezekiel not knowing how much he knows about Jeremiah. But he does get word where he is about Jerusalem. And my, my thing to the Christian is today, if God said, well, I'm going to send you a bunch of people, and when you talk to them, and when you preach to them, and however you witness to them, what my calling is to you, they're not going to listen to you and they're going to hate you. How many Christians will say, all right, send me, Lord, like Isaiah. And yet there are Christians, well, I want to serve the Lord. I want to know what the will of the Lord is. That's it. That's the public ministries I've had ever since I started in 2000. There are people that like it. There are people who don't care. <laughs> And there are people who hate it. And the scale of 1 to 10. 1 they love it, 10 they hate it. And there's all 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. God is telling Ezekiel there is a rebellious people. Do you remember who Jeremiah and Ezekiel were? They were the priests. I don't know how close they work to the altar, the brazen altar. But they would get some sense of who the character of the people of Israel were. By the offerings they brought. Jeremiah and Ezekiel would see the people that would come to the, t to the temple not wholehearted. They're going there because they have to. They're going there to make a show. Like the guy who puts an offering envelope in the, in, in the plate and there's nothing in it. The guy that shows up to church and he wants business prospects or he wants peace with his wife or he wants to date this person. Or a vote or something. And God says, I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. And you know what? They don't care. I've been six years at, at the farmer's market here in Daytona Beach, and I preach what the word of God says. I quote what the word of God says. And many do not care. Some will even argue with you. And some will listen. But we will find out later on, Lord willing, in Ezekiel, there is a blood of the fingertips. There is the call of the watchman that we will get to, Lord willing. And they, the children of Israel, whether they will hear all right, so there will be some that will hear. Or whether they will forbear, there will be some that won't. You will not have 100%. So these mega churches 
these crowded churches are doing something wrong. I know a man who said, you know, the bigger the church and the more problems it is. And I've seen that man's church and how big it is and, and how many problems it is. For they are a rebellious house. That's God's stand of the children of Israel throughout the Old Testament. Israel is in their rebellion. And they always have been in rebellion until God gives them the new spirit and the new heart. Which he will in the millennium. Before the millennium begins. Yet shall they shall yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So this is the bad news. I am giving you a commission of a ministry and it ain't going to be 100%. But they cannot say, I didn't know. Now I preach, or I try to say often at the farmer's market that God's given me. You're without excuse. The moment you hear that Jesus saved, now when I say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, you are without excuse. And they will have to profess that God sent a, a, a man that preached the truth. Before they say, Jesus is the Lord. And I'm not the only one that God sends out there. There'll be there are Christians out there who are faithful to God in the calling and witnessing. They will be the men and women to the lost people, yet shall they know there's been a prophet among them. I am a prophet to the fact that by the scriptures I can tell you without Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. And for the Christian, I am a prophet with the scripture to say, if you don't do what God tells you to do, and you keep living for self, you're going to lose rewards, crowns, and inheritance. Now, I'm not a prophet where I can tell you the future, but I am a prophet where I can tell you what the Bible says. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Who knows what they're going to... They, they locked Jeremiah in prison. Jeremiah was slapped in the face. A prophet walked up to Jeremiah and took the, took the wooden notes and broke them in half. And I can imagine, like the life of Jesus, there are many, 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 many things that are not recorded in the Scriptures. You can only imagine it happened to Jeremiah, and it will happen to Ezekiel. And I've got stories myself. Neither be afraid of their words. And Jeremiah, from the, from the book that we just read, as we go into Ezekiel, there were plenty of harsh words against Jeremiah. We're going to put you in prison. We want you dead. We're going to kill you. Be the same thing with Ezekiel. With me, with the fire, we're going to call the police and the police will drive you away. No, no they won't. I'm amazed after six years they just have not gotten the idea is that guy ain't leaving. That guy's going to stay here with Jesus outside of, of the fact of rain or his own physical health ailments. He's going to stay. And he's going to preach. We just might as well just get in the, get in the seat, put our seatbelts on, and just buckle for the ride, and we just might as well believe the Jesus that he preaches, but they won't.
I am so hungry. Can you go in the refrigerator and get the fruit of the briars and thorns? I, I want a good thorn fruit salad. No. Briars and thorns have no fruit, no nuts. I don't know if there's any vegetables, but no vegetables. You cannot go in any grocery store. Say, may, may I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for the briar section. Oh, you mean briar's ice cream? No, I mean briar's in your produce. Get thorns. Oh, we got roses over it. No, no, something I can eat. And they would look at you like, well, you're an oddball. And don't you know that, um, I'm trying to think, was it Joab? Joab went up to this one city, he said, hey, where's this man? You know, he defiled the king, we want him. Oh, you know, our, our men are hungry, we need food. Well, you know, unless you have these people, we're not going to give you no food. And, and I think it's Joab said, well, listen, when we get them, and when we conquer them, I'm coming back to the city, and I'm going to teach your butt with thorns and briars. And what Joab, I think it's Joab, what Joab, I believe it is, did was he went into that city, he grabbed the elders of that city, he pulled their pants down, got some thorns and briars, and went across to Heine. Do you know your lesson? Have you learned your lesson? Now go put some band-aids on the butt and... Put your clothes back on. Briars and thorns hurt. Ezekiel, you're going to have them look at you bad. They're going to have words against you they're bad, and they're also going to hurt you. At one point, God's going to take the take the life of Ezekiel's wife. That hurt. Thou doest dwell among scorpions. That's not a nice little bug, bug or whatever you want to call him. There can be death with scorpions. But there are also going to be that sting of, of pain. Wait to the tribulation period. Well, I believe it's the horses had the, the scorpion tails. You're going to want to die for three months and you can't? Now this Ezekiel would be a type of the 144,000 going amongst the, the the children of Israel in the tribulation period. Be not afraid of their words. Again, that's repeated. So the implication by God, they're going to say much. Nor be dismayed at their look. They're going to give you that look. And so amazing... My ministry, and I know if I, people give you that look like, oh, I'm supposed to pack up, go home, run away. And I give them that look back and say something. Though they be a rebellious house. That's God's people. Thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they hear again. Verse 5. Whether they will forbear, again, verse 5. For they are a most rebellious house. You know, we got people in the church age. A good preacher, a good preacher gets up there and preaches the word of God. And there are people who hear and do well. And there are people who don't hear and don't do so well in the eyes of God. 
Because those that do well don't do so well in the world. And those that don't do well in the Lord do well in the world. That's not your temperature gauge to look at. How great you are in the world is the wrong gauge. How much does the world hate you? And I mean when the world hates you, not because you're an idiot, not because you're foolish, but because you are doing right by the Bible. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Now when you see these things about the son of man, Ezekiel, do you not see the life of the son of man of Jesus Christ? He spoke, some people listened. He spoke, some people didn't do what he said. You know, it's amazing. Jesus says today to the Christians, go in all the world and preach the gospel. We don't do it. Do you want, do you want enough money to get a Sunday? Read in the Bible where Jesus said, after he did a healing, don't go tell people. Don't tell anybody what happened to you. And they go out and publish the word. When Jesus says don't, we do. When Jesus says do, we don't. God said do not eat that fruit in the garden. And they ate the food that's in the garden. Jesus says today, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And they don't believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And they won't be saved. But you should see in the boring Ezekiel 2, the Old Testament, you should see the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And if you don't see in verse 6, the thorns, that you have the thorns upon the head of Jesus Christ. And man put it there. And I can imagine Jesus Christ got all kinds of looks. I can imagine he's even recorded scripture. They said all kinds of things about him. And he was in the midst of of a rebellious house. So was Peter, so was James, so was John, and so was Saul who became Paul. You know, today the Jews are our enemy, but we're to love them, we're to pray to, for them, and we are to witness to them, and we are to pray for the peace in Jerusalem. Though they are an enemy of the gospel. Why? Because they're a rebellious house. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee. Be not thou rebellious like the rebellious house. Now watch the Christian commission here. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. There's the Christian right there. So that's the nation of Israel. That's the people of God. God's claim for his own people. Ezekiel 2. They are rebellious. <laughs> you see that? The Jews, they are bad. Revelation chapter 3. Oh, Revelation is my favorite book. Revelation 3.14 Unto the angel of the church of the scene. That's us. That's where we are today. We are the Laodicean church. Laodicean means rights of the people. And our preacher said, that ain't right. What'd you say? That ain't right. <laughs> you ain't know what you said. You, you. Right to the people. So what does Jesus tell John to write about his bride? As God told Ezekiel to write about his bride. You realize that 
God's bride is Israel. Well, you know that. God has a bride. It's Israel. Jesus Christ has a bride. It's the church. Not the building. Satan has a bride. It's the world. God has a bride in the city. It's Israel and Jerusalem. Jesus Christ has a bride in the city. It's the church, New Jerusalem, not Washington, D.C. And Satan has a bride in a city. It's the world and is Babylon, Rome. And you do know that if you were to look at the pictures of the layout of Rome and her buildings, you could not mistake it to the pictures and layouts of the city of Rome. Look at the buildings of Washington, D.C. They are Roman. But, so what does Jesus say about his bride? Verse 17, in the middle of the verse. We're not looking at what the bride says about herself. Let's look at what Jesus said about his bride as God said to his bride, Knowest not, thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Boy, that's a butt-kicking lesson for the church. As Ezekiel is a butt-kicking relationship of Israel. So Israel and the church... Before our grooms, God and Jesus, you know what? We think we're doing great, and Judah did, Jeremiah. But in the eyes of God, in the eyes of Jesus, we stink. And we make God sick. I'll let you read Revelation 13, 16 yourself. Get God a barf bag. We're moving. Second Ezekiel. That's what God says about his people. Before Ezekiel is called to preach his people. Revelation 3 tells us what Jesus thinks about his bride before they're going out to preach the word. Now, I know Peter, James, and John, well, Peter and, and uh, John and Paul are already preaching. But for the future of the church and all the, the ages there are, you tell them that last church age, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Israel, you're rebellious. Would you not see the one in the same for both 